I normally talk about weather, but another cool thing in the sky in 2024 is a solar eclipse coming April 8th. Will weather impact your viewing experience of this solar eclipse, though? In this video, we're not just going to take a look at the path, we'll also take a look at where historically cloud cover and precipitation could play a role, while also looking at future model trends. Let's get into it. One Nation Weather. Thanks so much for joining me here at One Nation Weather. Don't forget that the weather maps that I show in this video are from Weather Belt. Link to their free trial in the description. This map right here is showing us a look at the eclipse path and the percent of the sun that's going to be covered during this eclipse based on your area. You can see that red stripe with the yellow in the middle there from parts of Texas all the way on up there through Maine. That is where you've got that path of totality. That is where at some point during this event, you're going to see the sun fully covered by the moon there. But everyone from California all the way to the southeast coast in Florida seeing at least some percentage um, of the sun being covered at its max point um, and during this eclipse. Now you can see in places like San Antonio and Austin there in Texas, surrounding zones, it's going to be around 1.35 p.m. Central Time um, when that totality is happening, when the sun is 100% covered. Waco, Colleen, Dallas, that's going to be closer to 1.40 p.m. Central Time. In Texarkana there, um, right on that Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas border, around 1.45 p.m. Central Time, or give or take. Um, Hot Springs, Little Rock, it's going to be around 1.50 p.m. Central Time. Then as you head on up there towards parts of Southeast Missouri, Jonesboro, the Poplar Bluff area, kind of 155 going into that two o'clock um, central time frame there especially as you go towards Paducah and the southern Illinois region northwest Kentucky all those areas there Terre Haute um, in southern Indiana. It's going to be around 2.05 p.m. Central Time. We're going to get the switch over to Eastern Time there as this pushes through places like Indianapolis right before around 3.10 um, there in Eastern Time there. For Toledo and Cleveland and Ohio, it's going to be around 3.15 p.m. Eastern Time that you get this. 3.20 p.m. Eastern Time in places like Erie, um, Pennsylvania, and Buffalo, New York. Final locations of Syracuse and Watertown in New York, it's going to be around 3.25 p.m. Eastern Time for you. Burlington um, and northern Vermont, as well as in the parts of northern New Hampshire there in that red zone, um, that's where you're going to have that brief totality around 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Again, exact times. Um, these aren't exact. This is just in the nearest five minutes here. Central and eastern Maine, it's going to be around 3.30 to 3.35 and a very brief um, totality there in that zone. So again, taking a look at this graphic, again, you can see pretty much all of the southeastern United States getting at least 50% totality. So at some point during the peak of this during the afternoon on April 8th, we are going to get a pretty decent eclipse over a lot of the southeastern states. Um, and we'll talk about the safety tips and the shades a little bit later on. Um, but if you live through the central U.S., a, a solid 50% plus at least um, in the West Coast, at least seeing a little bit of this eclipse there. Now, what could affect your eclipse viewing, of course? It's what I normally cover right here on One Nation Weather, and it is your weather across the country. And total solar eclipse cloud cover climatology, which is just your average percentage of clouds that's in the sky on April 8th in the afternoon, um, dating all the way back to 1979. That's what this is looking at here from the National Weather Service. And you can see through parts of Texas, Oklahoma, a lot of the southern part of this area, we're looking at solid, you know, maybe 40-50% cloud cover on average. So a decent 50-50 shot at the sky being pretty sunny there over this region. So that's not so bad. Um, but once you get on up there into the Midwest, the Great Lakes, yeah, that's where the average cloud cover around that time in the afternoon is above 60, even 70% in some cases closer to the Great Lakes and interior northeast there. Um, so that's a little bit more unfortunate fortunate for your average viewing potential. Again, that doesn't mean it's going to be cloudy this year. That's just using climato climatological data there, really showing us that it is normally cloudier up in that region. Here is your chance um, normally of it being 20% or less um, cloud cover. And again, you can see those chances are much higher, closer to 50-50 shot of it being completely sunny, even in some cases there. I'm um, in the far southwestern part of Texas's viewing area there. Um, but as you go on up there through parts of Missouri and into Illinois, Indiana, that's when you really start to see the shift over from good chance chances of it being pretty sunny, or at least mostly sunny, um, to it, the higher chances of it actually being on the cloudier side, because the chances of it being sunny are very slim. Another thing that we can look at is precipitation anomalies as we head into April with our longer term ensembles um, members here right now for this year to kind of show us where it's looking like it might be a little bit wetter than normal. And it looks like as we go um, in into March, it's going to be above average in precipitation over a lot of the east. Beyond that point, we start to see a little bit more spread and uncertainty in the ensembles. That's why you don't see any vibrant colors on screen. But overall, the majority of these ensemble members, which is just a collection of a bunch of models, really showing that as we head towards you know the 5th through the 12th of April, here, which is what's on your screen right now, right um, encompassing that eclipse day, looks a little bit above average in precipitation potentially over the southeast out of these European ensembles. Just one collection, but certainly not a good sign showing potentially, you know, some low pressure systems moving through Missouri, maybe on up there towards um, in New York with this kind of setup, draping that heavier rain and the flooding potential across the south. And that would mean obviously cloudier conditions over a lot of the southeastern part of the United States as well. So maybe even impacting parts of Texas's viewing. And you can see that exact same trend here out of the GFS ensembles 
um, which is another di a completely different collection of models coming together and saying, okay, it looks like it'll be a little bit wetter than average through a lot of the south and southeast as we head towards that same time frame here. Um, and again, that could really affect the southern part of this viewing area as well, um, even away from some of those northern areas that more, more typically kind of be hidden away from the eclipse up there, so to speak, um, if it were to be occurring on April 8th, which like it is this year. Now, again, your weeks three through four precipitation outlook, this is your Climate Prediction Center, an official outlook from, you know, the Climate Prediction Center there in NOAA. It is showing you that it is looking above average in precipitation March 30th through April 12th, um, and it does look like that could encompass a lot of the central and southeastern United States. Not really good signs, as more precipitation probably means more cloud cover. Now, things to note here, historical trends suggest that the best viewing for this eclipse will likely be in Texas and the south central region. Again, that's with those first few graphics we looked at, again, showing that the cloud cover is normally on the sunnier to mostly sunny side um, down there in the south central United States around um, the April 8th time of year. Typically, the Great Lakes and Northeast, um, on the contrary, they're having a little bit more of an iffy viewing chance um, with more days than not actually being on the partly to mostly cloudy side of things. And unfortunately, right now, actually, some of our current ensemble and model trends are actually indicating that some areas in the south central United States um, could be above average in terms of precipitation and cloudiness as we head towards April 8th of this year. And of course, in those northern areas, we'll also have to watch it as well. So it could be a little bit of a bust for some people here with this eclipse. Um, but if you get the sunshine, if you're able to see the eclipse, you might also be able to see this comet Pons Brooks here. Um, planets Jupiter and Venus should also be visible during this eclipse, um, during the totality, if you're in that path of totality when it gets completely dark in the night looking sky part of this eclipse that's when you're going to be able to see not only Jupiter and Venus but also this comet which is again Pons Brooks it is expected to be potentially visible during that totality right below Jupiter as seen in the perspective shown in that image on the left side of there um, and you can see again the eclipse sun and Venus kind of close to each other um, Jupiter and the comet close to each other there to the top um, left side of the sun in that graphic so you can see in terms of our comet info summary here comet Pons Brooks should be visible during the totality of this upcoming eclipse. So if you live in any of those areas from Texas to Maine that I listed earlier in the video, um, it, and especially if you're an experienced viewer of these kinds of events, um, certainly wouldn't be um, a bad idea to briefly check that on out. In addition um, to the moon fully covering the sun, of course, um, again, it will likely be seen below Jupiter in the night sky above. But important thing to know, um, unless you think that you can 100% view this safely um, through binoculars, through a telescope, without then, you know, getting blinded when the bright blue sky fills back up behind the totality, um, please don't try and do this. So unless you're an experienced astronomer or really know what you're doing, please don't try to view that comet. And of course, don't try to view this with the naked eye, just the eclipse in general. Always use those approved solar shades to view this event um, at any non totality point in the eclipse the only time you can take those approved solar eclipse glasses off um, as said by NASA and other you know regulatory areas and agencies um, the only time you can do that is during the totality when it's 100% covered um, but you can view this event indirectly um, especially if you live in a tree covered area I actually took these pictures and got these pictures during the 2017 solar eclipse and you can see them on the left side of your screen there look at those crescent shapes um, the leaves of trees actually act as little filters there they project what the eclipse is looking like right onto the ground if there's shadows underneath so it's really cool to see that there you can also do this with like an index card put a hole through it get shadows on the ground you can put layer your hands and just put little slots in your fingers if there's dark surface below and you should be able to see the eclipse through there so there are multiple different ways that you can actually view this eclipse without having to look directly at it if you don't have the glasses um, but it is really cool especially um, with those trees there and, and you can see those shadows that I got um, here in South Carolina during the 2017 eclipse during the partial portion now again let's just kind of rehash your historical likelihood of viewability using this image here from the National Weather Service and NOAA you can see right there on your screen notice those grayer dots towards the northeastern quadrant of the United States it's really important you see this that's where you know technically the viewability chance with you know just mostly sunny skies very clear skies the overall historic chance is closer to around at least 50 percent and maybe down even in towards closer to 20 to 30 percent just as a result of the clouds up there um, but if you go towards texas um, which is where i would highly recommend going if you have the ability to travel anywhere um, that's where we've kind of got more of that 60 to 80 percent chance normally of being able to see um, an event like this on april 8th um, but if you want to get weather content from me as well we're tracking an upcoming storm system here um, as we head through the end of March. If you want to get consistent, accurate, reliable, easy to understand forecasting content in a 10 minute period like this, um, and trust me, I don't normally just ramble on um, throughout these videos like I did in the solar eclipse one, you know, just making sure you get all the information on safety, the comet, the eclipse, on um, where it's going. 
path and all that. Um, and if you want to get updated on weather and events like this when they happen, um, please hit that subscribe button. Um, and that is it for this video. Hope everyone has a great day.